Hello, hello everyone. This is your favorite hair scissors here again, and we're doing a lovely reaction video. As always with these amazing reactions, my good friend Exodus, he is the wonderful little reactor. Hey, hi, <coughs> how's it going? My name's Exodius, and I'm here to vibe with Heretic and check out another cool ass song. Hope y'all are having a beautiful day. <laughs> All right, so this little video that I have for you, like as we everyone may already know, is we both did the Christmas truce last time, which was strictly about the truce on Christmas back in 1914, the one, the only, the ever time that that's ever going to happen, because warfare is warfare. For this particular one, the video itself is known as the future of warfare. So, minor things, as many people may already know, wa World War One was trench warfare which was a brand new doctrine at the time because due to the invention of the machine gun as well as artillery the old style of the uh, gentleman war they're not going to line up their men and charge at the enemy with gun and bayonet in hand especially thanks to the new advancements of the bolt action rifle you can easily switch your reload time from a solid 30 seconds down to maybe five to ten at best if you can lock your clip and yank it out and lock the bolt properly but an additional 20 seconds is enough time to get your head down and do that ideally as well as the new quote battlefield instead of it being a flat field or a hill or random bits all over the place it's a a, a particular piece of land the length of a football field whether it be soccer or football, Americano, or regular football for most of the world. This battlefield of 100 yards in, the, in freedom units is a, dead, is a no man's land, a pure plot of death. Whether if you be make your way in there, you're getting dusted one way or another. Yep. Either by mines, gunfire, or oblivion knows what else. Yep. Which, ironically enough, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this again, There's, I do remember another video that talks about World War I itself, where a majority of the deaths were never attributed to the actual combat phase. But before, before we get into that, let's get into the video itself, because I know many of you would love to see our reactions on this. And we'll go ahead and begin in three, two... Here we go. I love like besides the historical significance of this song, mm -hmm. just the visuals are so good. Like like we're getting we're getting visuals that just ex that are give they're feeding the mm -hmm. ex the point and the and what you're learning about yep. to your eyes and the ly the lyrics themselves and the music will just fill you with this energy where you can feel how heavy this is. Oh yeah, and I just want to say the and the instruments are just beautiful. That drum, mm -hmm. that drum just that drums just be kicking. The drums just kicking. <laughs> and then that guitar bass, I don't know which one it was, but they were just tearing it up. They 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 have at least one for what I know for the Sabaton band, they obviously they have their, their primary drummer, the two lead guitarists and a standard bass player which also sometimes will switch with one of the guitarists and be a quote second lead. 
they they all like I said for Sabaton when I actually show you a very special video known as the Great War you will see how big they make this because it's not it, this obviously this is never something simple it is more than just the warfare itself but this is celebrating the men that have fought and died or just remembering those who have came before us involving in this type of warfare but I kind of like so I, there's a bunch of things I have to hold back on now because as you say going through the visuals and stuff I want to do that in the analyze analyzing it after because there's so much I want to tell you about each and like every little scene and bit and oh <laughs> ready to go I can understand oh. that I can understand that my usual method is give it the big thick reaction throughout the entire thing that oh, because yeah. uh, it, it just kind of feels better to mm -hmm. have the like because you could react to the entire video by itself and yeah. then get into the and you could watch the entire video then get into the reaction of it yeah but merging them together feels more whole mm -hmm. and I don't have to like hold ideas in and then potentially lose them by the time I get oh, to the end of the video. Yeah, no, but, like 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 what I'm the my issue isn't holding it in the only issue is I would be stopping every other scene just to go over it. like because they're, they're throwing so much at us like let me uh, like I said I want I want to hold back for a bit I want to hold back because I want uh, I, like I said the music <laughs> alone is just pumping me through all right let's go ahead and continue on I told you it is. It is. I had a business going hard like that. Though, one of the first things I realized as we were listening through that, the 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 song. So as you said, this song is to remember and celebrate those who have been before us. Now, this is a that, song that's about every, that is every song that they do. Every single song okay. is you will become a patriot of whatever army, nation person that it is you will you will live and breathe and uh, like uh, like there's so much like so much for the future like for example Panzerkampf is about the russian counter charge after the battle of stalingrad or or like for example when we decide to do when we move on to world war ii portion when we do uh ghost division of eric eric rommel the best known tank commander or the basically the father of tank tactics or tank doctrine that managed to it managed to take his entire mo mechanized army through the ardon which is hills trees impassable where it would take an army three days to move he did it in a night and managed to outflank most of the belgian defenses well like something i really do like is this song isn't 
doom and gloom. Yeah, it's talking about something very terrible, but it, as they're as that what they make is, as given how the health what they make is here to celebrate these people. Nothing here has been like oh depressing. No, they, they, this is this is a celebration of these people, these people who fought and did what they did. Like the, the entire the entire like at no point was this like doom and gloom audio wise. This was like triumphant power music, power power, yeah, power metal, it. power metal. That that like I said, it's a like I said, Sabaton has managed to find such a niche that no one in the world can hate this. Unless you are finding things to hate, like for an example, as, as they've said in interviews, they've been called Nazis, they've been called communists, they've they've been insulted with every different insult you can come up with for an, all these videos, and they're like, they, they 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 even said like they don't care what you label them, they are here to play music, they are here to rock out, and they are here to bring back bring uh, tell the stories that no one will ever tell or remember unless without something like for. Uh, there's like so many different songs that each gives a message or something that not everyone will will ever look for. Yeah, you know, like, unless because most of this stuff, people won't go to a fucking Wikipedia page and just read up on this unless they're actively interested in this. Yeah. But this here is taking something that people love, music, and mm -hmm. something that people probably would love to understand and learn about, a metric fuck ton of history when it comes to mm -hmm. oh, it comes to, oh, there's something in my eye. <laughs> like just, they, they, they're just, they're putting it in the big, they're putting it in the blender and going, <laughs> and here we got, we got some high quality fucking yeah. history juice. We're yeah. good with, with a sprinkling of good music in it too. Yeah. It's, it is so good. So, as, like I said, first thing, I went ahead and turned down the music a bit, so we're just going to play it a little bit and I'll stop it at various points. That way, because like it's a short video, it's not going to care. But like, for Isn't example, here, here, different things, like I'm going to stop at different intervals. But like, for example, right here in the visuals alone, like all this right here is the first ever tank, which I believe, which that, I believe it said, yes, a Mark IV. Ba no. Yeah, the British created this tank, which is basically the a generic design itself. But the future of warfare is beyond just the tank, but is the beginning of war as we knew it. As you'll see, like, th thrown around in bits and pieces, obvious is the, quote, tank itself, but, and random bits, you can notice the bolt action rifle I mentioned about. The, the Flappenwaffler, or the flamethrower. And, that, like, oh, everything. Oh, oh, that tank, that prototype tank. Yeah. Literally, just, like that reminds me of the big of one of the big wheels of a tank. Yes, that yes. looks like one of the big wheels it, before they decided to add the rest of the tank. Yeah, the it, that that was kind of the primary issue with building the tank. Tanks we know nowadays they can handle almost all terrain. However, at this time, this machine could maybe go twenty clicks an hour. At best, and and th like this is the same this is the same engine that they were using biplanes on. Like, cause like at this time, they, it, this is not a fast moving machine. If you get caught under this thing, you are going to die because it is heavy that as that fuck. That is a big ass it, mass of fuck off metal like, on set, top of your existence. Yeah. But like, like I said, throughout this whole video itself, it shows all the different models, the makes. Like, for example, here is the initial machine gun. And I believe like these were water cooled. Like they had attach a jerry can of water. As it shot, the water would be sucked in to cool down the thing. Yeah, Which I'm I think is sure yeah, metal but, would probably be melting at the metal from that time yeah, would probably be but melting after. A while hila look, so. Hilariously, like said, this all came out in 1916. This is a two-year production value, and the thing was at the same time the German created their own, which I think they show later on in the video. Uh, if I can find it, ideally, but like I said, each thing that they show, like grenades, uh, different bits and pieces. But I saw things. some oh. interesting looking grenades at some yeah. point. The, the 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 quote first type of grenade or the uh, p pineapple grenade, which is more common, used as a fragmentation. Simple design, rugged grip. Uh, I know the French they would use the sticks, especially once you get to World yeah, War I remember, II type I remember style. See, I've, I've seen but, stick grenades. I remember seeing those in yeah. uh, Sniper Elite, actually. Yeah, but another thing is like for example, right here the gas ma gas masks, which in World War II the Germans became very efficient at utilizing the power of gas, which there's actually a whole video involving them on the Eastern, on the East-East Front, not the West Front, 
with uh, the UK and French. But, like I said, the future of warfare itself is specifically how war changed everything. Which, ironically enough, is the reason why we have now a Geneva Convention to prevent it. Oh, here it is. This is the first German tank. They, instead of the full rotating design, they made it more hard shell to the lower center of gravity. Yeah, it's basically like a box. At the, like I said, like all the, the initial things. These came out, I want to say, a month or so time frame of the uh, Mark IV, I think it said, Mark V of the uh, British version. But like with these, like the, as with all the lyrics it goes, they, I believe they called their regiment the 32nd. Will quote, lead the way, yeah, as in, true. yeah, the 32. They, with, <laughs> thanks to these tanks, this was the initial thing to help push. It's a walking, quote, fortress you if you get close enough and start firing into the portholes you can kill the driver and everything but that's these a things... small hole in a big ass fuck you machine that's making its yeah. way towards you yeah it's, and it's by the time it, exactly. and by the time it's close enough it's probably already shot you once or twice exactly though i do wait, hold on before you wait, jump back actually yep also you're not gonna keep making it lower i can, we can barely hear it now i know like, so, like i said the issue i'm trying to think of like for everyone else but like right here now, so I noticed I've seen that type of blade before. I think that's a stick grenade you were referring to, and I feel like that's uh, a smoke yeah, right grenade here, right here, yeah, right here is a smoke grenade. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, this might be a smoke. It might be a. I don't think it's an incendiary. I don't think incendiary is an even thing affiliated. But like I said, this this no. World War One updated the way warfare was fought and for, for done. Like, like I said, it's scattered about like different things you can see. For example, right here, planes. That was a perfect fucking pause. Yeah, that I, pause was literally the most. I'm, I'm careful on my pauses. I'm really quick, but I, I, I th don't think this one officially wasn't made out until World War II. I think, or more the end of <clears> World War One itself. But like I said, World War One was more biplanes than anything, and like the Germans, they actually <clears throat> went a step up and used zeppelins to really I... keep their things, especially for bombers, at least until the f gaping flaw that it happened. Of uh, what was it? Yeah, British the... Wonderful German Don't fall when the U.S. war laws heard. Yeah, uh, Allied bombs won't win. Yeah, <laughs> at, le at least with it, it's a large variety of different things that happen. Oh, hang on, here's a. Let me. There we go. Yeah, much better. Yeah, here. Yeah. But like I said, at least with this song it, they, they bring out like everything involved in the future warfare so like for example as they say this was the battlefield Fleur, uh, Fleur's Curse, Coursiettes song says it better than I can but like it, like it showed in the mere ending it was a week long battle and with it like for example like so everything's updated everything's modified st standardization for all guns standardization for weapons to make things usable I mean, heck, even when we were in battle, most of our machine guns had gaping flaws. Like, I forget the type um, right, uh, shot, um, machine gun we used, but it had three major flaws. The first one, they were not standardized. So if you lose a piece, such as the barrel warped, the sight fell off, or you simply outright lost it, you couldn't use that weapon anymore because you would never be able to make that same mo model again for that gun. Mm -hmm. Standardizing made things much easier because you'd yeah. like, cause it's like, oh, we these are the parts that we use to make these things. Because back then, they'd yeah. be like, okay, we finally managed to put this thing together, but the next one is built in a completely different way yeah. because they never had a yeah. uniform way to make things. Yeah. Also, I see that that's the type of grenade that we normally uh, see yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Right on uh, right yeah. near. Yeah, the sta grenade. standard standardized one. It's very quote. And that looks like a flare gun there too. Yep. Uh, one right next yep. to it. And then, like I said, here, here's the same mar mark for the machine gun as well. I don't know which sh soldier this is, but like I said, this was like more of standardized, especially into World War II, until they somewhat tried to make them lighter and easier to carry. But at least with all this different warfare and everything, it's all... Oh, I forgot. The second issue with our machine gun was there were gaping holes in the magazine. Like, there were slots that you could see into it, and in the mud, in the dirt, would jam in there, lock up the gun. Completely ah. useless now. And yeah, I remember, oh. I remember hearing that yeah. jamming's one of the biggest issues. Yeah. Holy fuck, yeah. that thing looks scary. Yeah, like this, this, like I said, there's like different types of machine guns involved as well. This one, I think this was either the French or the German, no, not German. German had the barrel one, but 
this particular one was like an update version of it. Like, I don't want to say Italian, because I remember the Italians had a machine gun that shot 30 rounds, and they would constantly be switching it out. But I can't remember if it was a side feed or a top feed, but like they would just constantly be rotating out their guns until it runs out of ammunition. I remember, I don't remember which war it was, mm -hmm. but um, there was this, I remember, I don't know if this was an actual thing, but there was some type of guns that you would have to have a second person feeding the ammo of that's, the that's the that's the sub that's the uh, machine gun. Ah, so the, it, was, it, it was a it was a t it was a machine gun team. Look at that tank. Yeah. That makes yeah yeah. This this is the this is the Mark Five or whatever the whatever it says here in the video. They they've done the they they do the research. Oh, my personal favorite, the. Uh, I oh, yeah, it's just nice yeah. where you could we, one moment you trench stab knife. and next you trench punch knife. them. It is a trench knife. That was what. Yeah. Can't lose you. Can't lose it when it's wrapped clean around your fingers. Yep. Uh, it was like there's like so many different things that were added to this, let alone. I love the you oh. the lyrics. And here we here. go. The, 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 okay, hold on. Let me go back to the to the audio because the 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 way the lyrics are said. <laughs> And the number of voices sitting right behind it, mm -hmm. like it, like there's there's the first voice that says it, yeah. and then there's the other voices that are sitting like a half second behind mm -hmm. it, and they all come in so well. Each time they say something, it hits so hard, yeah. so good. Yeah. Well, hilarious enough, we'll, we'll me and you will probably search this offline, but the lead singer is known as Joaquim or Joaquim. I can't really pronunciate uh, Swedish very well. But like I said, he's the he's the current lead singer for it, and at least with his bass on is proper strong. And ironically, he has his own little gimmick where, as he goes with some of the songs, he will literally beat the everything crap out of his thigh. Which we'll definitely see when we do the Great War. Yes, yes, there are. I will show you a music. He needs to fight. He's like, I'm sorry. What what is strong? What is stronger, a Nokia or Hokim's thigh? Let's find the, out. The one person capable of shattering a Nokia in one punch. <laughs> oh, but no, like so. You know, another, I, I, I can understand that though. Oh. Like you get you get so into something, mm -hmm. you start you, you you get like I yeah. as a little bit of another variant of that. Mm -hmm. I have so uh, while like what last year because I think it was only la it was last year. Um, I had been playing, and this is gonna be a weird con comparison, mm -hmm. but I had been playing a thing. It was a, it was a rhythm game. And like getting really into it. It was a really difficult song, but I got so into it that I purposely closed my vent in my room to build the heat up so I could focus inward as hard as possible. Because I needed to be, <laughs> I needed to be like in that state of like, like ever. Oh, I'm really? in a state of energy so fucking powerful. God I almighty. need to be as warm as possible. So I'm like, fuck the AC. I need the heat. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it worked, <laughs> and I I beat the song. It worked. It, was, <laughs> it worked. You focus, and it done it. Oh, another another fa another favorite of mine, an artillery. A whole team of I want to say ten to twenty of these. Each one is crewed by anywhere from ten to twenty other men, with one officer marking range, marking command fires, and the th and only thing about these is because during this time period we did not have radios. We had long. We had transmission, like the. Uh, uh, we had the, not the typewriter, the type. Uh, the, the little little uh, code thing. Um, the little Morse code thing. Morse code, yeah, the, yeah, the whatever, whatever, whatever the Morse code used for. Yeah, that was that was its primary transmission. The other tra mode of transmission, especially for those on the battlefield, was a carrier pigeon. And these yeah. were the, I, I don't I don't know how these how they did these pigeons, but they've managed to train them to know exactly where to go or where to roost once you le release them into the air with a little thing on their uh, ankle. Check it out right now. So, mm -hmm. like two three days ago, yeah. I was on. I don't know where I was on, but I was I saw a video of yeah. this show, and so this dude's sitting there at a bar, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And this guy, it was, it was some it was, brought, it was something history related, and so he this dude starts trying to start shit with him. Mm -hmm. because he's of some nationality that the people hate because of war yeah. stuff. War stuff, war and stuff. And he gets ready to like, start shit with him, yeah. and dude gets up, swipes at him with a knife, 
makes the dude back up. Someone gets ready to like alert somebody on a on some type of message, and yeah. he immediately shoots the thing. Yeah. And then right after all this happens, a bird flies right through the air, and he pops that fucker clean out of the sky. <laughs> and initially, I'm like, oh wait, first, I'm wait, terrified. I I I think I may know what movie you're talking. Well, I think it might have been a show. Actually, it's a recent uh, one. A, I don't know. Name? I, I mean, I'm thinking of a movie, but that was uh, involving the Lost Battalion. I forget what it's called. It was. This was a show that it's been recent. I've been recently seeing oh, pop up. I can't remember the name of it. Bro. We'll we'll but, have to we'll have to I, think find it later. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm so I was so caught off left field because I'm like, did he shoot the thing off instinct because he saw something flying towards him, or do we know what that was? I go to the comments and I learn. Oh wait, carrier pigeons. He popped that fucker knowing exactly <laughs> what's going on, and that makes me more scared. Cause yep. it's a type of energy when someone has just got done slapping a phone with a knife, shooting one thing that's on a wall, and then without hesitating, popping a bird clean out of the fucking sky. Mm -hmm. That's some scary ass power. Yep. And I don't want to fuck with anyone yep. who could do that. Yep. But like I said, with carrier pigeons, they that that's actually the primary way they could call artillery support. And the thing for artillery is it's a creeping barrage. So a creeping barrage, for those that may not know, is they will get a position and fire. And then they will adjust accordingly in one way or another. Now, wind, distance, elevation, all that's going to be difficult. All they could do is focus on the general area of where they're aiming at. And that's if the person that sends off the message knows exactly where the quote, target is. Now, the biggest issue of Creeping Barrage is one of two things. Obviously, the first one, it's oncoming dread if it's coming toward you because it'll be like 100, 80, 50, 20 on top of you. You're, you're literally numbering out how close this big-ass fuck-off thing yeah. is about to hit you. Like, that, I'd be terrified. Yeah, like, but the inverse is they could also be going the wrong direction, such as they hit the enemy – and you're cheering, and they hit again, and they hit again, and all of a sudden it just starts creeping back your direction. You're like, wait a minute, pop one right next to you, pop one right behind you, and then it just friendly. That this, like I said, this time period was the biggest friendly fire machine you could think of. So you had to be very accurate on what you were, and like, like, like in the movie, uh, the, I think it, I think it was called Lost Battalion, where basically the American troops that got lost in the Ardun they had to send out three different carrier pigeons to call off the artillery bombardments because the first the first couple rounds hit the target but it was coming back onto them and the pigeon like was severely wounded because the germans were shooting the pigeons to prevent them from getting the message out and by the time like, it came back the lieutenant literally in, in the movie they showed the lieutenant getting the message and like stop the bombardments and he's running out like knocking the guys over like stop it Stop it! You're hitting our own men. <laughs> Good goodness! It is. Just imagine in the imagine how terrifying it must be to be to be like trying to handle your thing, and then yeah. within a swift second, yeah. a big ass mass of metal flies past your face. Imagine how many people had near miss situations and yeah. genuinely had that happen to them. I'd be terrified. Yeah. It's 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 sickening sometimes. It's scary. It's horrid. And we got bombs, those things. Yeah, Who's like gonna... artillery now, shells, mortars. There. Yeah. <laughs> that grenade there from yeah. those, the one with the big old spike on the end, I've never yeah. seen that mock of a grenade. Yeah, it's, it was an initial idea. I think that might have been an anti-tank at the time, like, because it was, like, really, really brand new to it. Because, like, armor, when it came out, they had to figure out ways to break it, and that took, like, maybe a couple weeks of strapping together multiple grenades and chunking it or like throwing molotovs on it if they could make one like that like for an example I think like inside of it into an oven or something yeah. Like oh yeah but yeah like i said this like i said the beginning of tank warfare was back in 1916 in uh it just said it it just said it where'd it go the fleurs Cruiset, which was definitely on the french uh, french front at least when the tanks basically first officially joined the battle. I think there were actually some issues involving the tank regiment because they had, quote, one chance to do this, and if they did it too early, 
the Germans would come back at them with their own tanks not too long from then. Yeah, you gotta, hand, gotta handle it quickly before the enemy gets yeah. smart and understands how to yeah. counter you, or else you yeah. might be fucked just as much. Exactly. But like I said, when when, it, when the tanks did come out, like so during this one week battle, it was it was something. It was devastating. And like I said, yeah, there it is. The British Mark IV. That's it. The British Mark IV tanks. Like, yeah. Even it, it, even in this moment, like we're we're getting a whole lot more history, but just yeah. just the fucking solo though. Yeah. The and solo is. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And like yeah. then you realize that at the, in, during this epic solo, you're learning about some yeah. very devastating shit, yeah. and then you're conflicted because you're like, "This solo's amazing, <laughs> but fuck, that's a lot of death." Yeah, yeah. Another another fun fact, if I remember correctly, the German tank. I don't remember their make. I don't remember their name. I don't know what they called it, but officially, I I might be getting this mixed up with something else. But there was a type of German tank that was captured by the allies i can't remember if it was world war one or world war two but there was only like 26 of them ever made and when the, and like i said like this one was like captured in the battlefield and taken back and it was kept like as a trophy or something i'm assuming world war two because that sounds like more of a world war two type idea but like it was like the only one i i think it's still in a museum somewhere but it's like the only one that was found captured and still quote working today or at least still, a, a quote, alive in a sense. What if you can legally own and drive a tank and just use it as a car? Uh, you'd have to get a special permit because uh, some location, yeah, well, I actually learned this because of my work, but if you are at a certain weight limit or a certain height, you have to have special permits to drive through a majority of the states. Hmm. At, like, for a tank itself, that's a good couple tons, and not every American road can handle that. Ah, some roads are yeah. So just, some bridges and roads might not be able to handle no. uh, something no. that fucking heavy. Yeah, yeah, especially that slow too, and it rattles. Like you, you already know, like an American. Imagine tank. how many people would be so pissed off at this slow ass tank yeah. driving. The noise complaint. The, the, the noise complaints alone, just by oh, it starting crap. and then driving down the street, traffic jam. Oh yeah. I mean, no one's gonna have issue with you. You have a you have a freaking tank. Like, you're, you're, no one's gonna really say anything, because you, you, God knows that that motherfucker's loaded. No one's going. No, no people are yeah, gonna be pissed. Other no issues. one's gonna be funnily, like, oh, file a complaint. Funnily enough, there was actually a buddy of mine back uh, back home in Alabama that said like, hey, I in a couple of years you got you guys want to come back together and rent out a tank like in a couple states away and we. Have it around you there is a place i can't remember if it's new jersey i can't remember if it's virginia i can't remember if it's north carolina but there is a place on the east coast you can rent out a tank for a day fucking beep, boop, boop, beep, boop. yes hey, so, uh, I you can rent, rent it tank. i do not i want to rent a big ass fuck off that massive metal that can wreck someone's exactly shit. exactly and they're like all right that'd be like uh yeah it's 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 an it's an amount of money it's a amount of money yes but I do not know if they give you. I doubt they're going to give you ammunition. But I, I pray they fucking don't. Then again, I guess you could probably um, unless they, they unless they got like a tank course you you ride it in or yeah, something. I don't know. Yeah, they could do a big test place where you could just yo imagine imagine being like hey yo so you know how to drive right and like no nah, I don't know how to drive. But oh, like, it's easy. It's just only it, it's only it, sixteen it, pedals. But like, but the thing about it, though, I mean, like, think someone's like, hey, you know how to drive a car? Nah, man, I never learned how to drive a car. And then they're like, hey, yo. And then you're like, oh, it's tank. And then so, at some point, tanks get brought up. Like, oh, I know how to drive a tank, though. And then everyone looks at you and like, okay, so you're telling me <laughs> you don't know how to drive a car, but you can drive a giant mass of fuck you perfectly fine. You're hey, like, yes. hey, that is the army. That is the army. You I mean, it could, you don't even have to be in the army because you could just rent a tank a few times, learn how to drive one, learn how to fire one, and be like, oh, you know, I know, I know how to one-man tank. Yeah, I, ironically. Well, what the fuck with you then? I, I, I mean, ironically, if you have the money to afford a tank, you wouldn't be in the army. And the only other time that a generic person that would not know how to drive a car but know how to drive a tank would have to be in the army because that's the only other time you're going to have the money, time, or ability to drive said thing and be paid to do it. Like, like, like I said, True. you don't. You don't. You don't have to be intelligent to drive a tank. 
Fair, fair. I mean, the fact that you can rent a tank, I'm fairly certain after a few times renting a tank, you can learn pretty well how to drive yeah. them. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just, I wouldn't want to fuck with someone who could rent a tank and park. Like, you could be <laughs> like, imagine, and now I'm curious, how many, how many accidents are, do tank, do tank renters get? Because think about it, think about it, think about it. You're in a big ass mass of metal. Um, there's, 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 it is a niche. To, it is a niche. There have to be some cases of like, Oh, you you kind of ran over their car by accident. Oh, don't worry about mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh... just imagine it being like, hey, I'm tired of Steve's bullshit. Let me go rent a tank and accidentally flatten his fucking car. <laughs> uh... Yo. Yeah. But other than that, like I said, that is it. At least for another one of our videos. I I do thank y'all for at least joining us. If you made it this far, thank you very much. I hope you. At least laughed or learned something ideally like I, 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 this was paused yeah but like i said if you want to see this video i'm gonna go ahead and add the oh no nope, back up there we go i'm gonna add the link to the video in description if you can't already see it right here but i'm gonna go ahead and link it just in case i'm gonna link to, i'm gonna link to Ex exodus's youtube as well and we're all gonna be able to enjoy ourselves and hopefully hope you have a time yeah and hopefully we, when we decide to sit down again, I'm gonna show you another wonderful video about Sabaton, and you are hopefully you get to enjoy it as well. <laughs> this was hella fun. This was hella fun. I yeah. I learned new things. I had some weird ass thoughts. I initially before in the, in an earlier attempt on this that got mired because uh, small brain moments. I had miss. I had had a weird thought because I didn't know what came first, American football or um, trench warfare because the uh, heretic here had made a correlation between trench warfare and football. And I'm like, please don't tell me that football was based off trench warfare. But apparently the football came beforehand. Foot, foot, football in the world sense, soccer, yes. Soccer came first. Oh, football. but football in the American sense came. So there is the plausibility that someone possibility, looked at possibility. And that's I don't know how I feel about that. There is the possibility that someone looked at trench it, warfare and it, like said, it, it all depends because I, I I have to look more than likely football for sure in both senses were at least well done because the only thing I remember is as we saw in World War One the Christmas truce they were playing soccer. Oh yeah, true, 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 true. Yeah, like and they and they did that like both Germans and French and British. Did also, that. that brings in a strong question because I'm fairly certain it'd be the case. Who the fuck brought a bouncy ball to a war field? Because that would be such a because like there's there's I'm fairly certain that happened in actuality in in the actual event, but that would imply that someone just to help de stress had a bouncy ball with them, the, and whenever they could, they uh, just bounce it and try to make let their brain uh, defrag from. That's a very bad word to use, actually, in this case. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, that, well, I, well, uh, the sat the sadder bit is this was at the same time in which the war was to believed to be done by Christmas. Rewind, say that again. So, when the war happened, they believed that it would be ended by Christmas. Back in 1914, yes. They, like I said, th like I said, when this first started, they had no, no one had any idea how powerful these guns were. Imagine shooting At, one of those things, seeing it tear someone to pieces and being it, deeply terrified. Ugh. Fun, fun fact, like all types of warfare is very cruel and horrible. In fact, I believe in fun fact. You say fun fact. I, I mean, for fun in fact, fact the Roman. Shit. In fact, uh, I think for most like the early like in fact ancient warfare, for sure. I think the Romans what they did was, at it, it'd be like a three day battle type thing. One day you get grab your stuff, you go out to the battle. Second day you fight the battle. Third day you come home, and on the third day you would basically spend some time with R and R. Like you would like for I, I don't remember exactly if it was like the Romans or the German Greeks or something. There were time like certain army. There was an army that standardized R and R after a battle. Because like like because because you, you were slaughtering your own man hand and foot and arrow and blade and like because like war itself wasn't that very common. We just managed. I like to how the past them. has better fucking mental health when it, during heavy things in the current state of the world. Well, like, like I said, in the current state of the world, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, that's like, look, 
Because like with it, like the world wasn't the world wasn't that big. Like the big, the farthest you would ever go was maybe to the end of the horizon from your village. Like most people will live and die for generations in the village that they're born in, until like yeah, the Greek states or how. the Persians oh, or yes, yeah, like Roman, like Rome, like one, like uh, everything was just like everything expanded once we became tribes and we became countries and kingdoms like like for the thing like the full thing it w most Boy, people, everyone thought they were much bigger then, yeah. but then you realize how fucking massive everything is yeah and then imagine how imagine <laughs> all the people who thought that their world was such a small thing and all the stuff that could have been happening around them that we don't yeah. know of because they don't know about it okay fun fact though very fun fact you're gonna be interested in in, I, I just saw this on Facebook not too long ago. Back in 1864, yeah, 1864, the very first fax machine was ever built. It was a typed, uh, a transmission typewriter or something. The samurais were officially, quote, uh, removed from the class system during the Mio period in Japan the same time period and abraham lincoln died i believe i think it was like 1860 something or whatever i forget there, there is but there officially there is a 22 year time span in which a samurai could fax a letter to abraham lincoln huh yes that is the <laughs> abraham lincoln by his own business uh sir you have a fax from who um, a samurai, and he's like, "Oh shit, another one! Oh yeah." <laughs> <laughs> but we we should have ended this like at least two, three minutes. Oh, ago. don't worry. I, I I like I said, I'm gonna try to block all this off and be like, "Hey, here's the video. Here's our L analysis, and this is just random bits that are just on and on about." Ah, it all choppy and segmented. I get you. I get you. Yeah, yeah. It, like just to help people out, because some people may want to watch the whole video. Other people may just want to listen to us jabber on, jabber, jabbering. Uh, but like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is still fog as hell though. I, yeah. I, it's just hella fun. Yeah, like I said. But at least to officially f end us off, thank all of you for joining us. If you want to watch, if you want to see us again, just let us know. We're gonna try to make another video, maybe next week, maybe next month. We haven't really decided yet. But just, just whenever we don't forget. <laughs> if, when, who knows? I don't know. Y'all have a stay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Exodius, that has been Heretic. Uh, we have been us, you have been you, you have been us, we sure enough hope so. We'll talk uh, to y'all later. Bye bye.